Hello everyone, this is Sinan Ertemel. Welcome to my fifth lecture, which will be about introduction of behavioral game theory that will be motivated by guessing game, which is an application of Keynes's beauty contest. Guessing game was first introduced into economics literature by my advisor Erwin Mulan in his 1986 book called Game Theory for Social Sciences. So, I am playing this game in each and every game theory courses that I teach. So, of course, now you are sitting home watching online. So, just imagine a classroom with 20 students. And I ask each student to pick a number, integer number, between 0 and 100. And the student who picks the number closest to two-thirds of the average wins. It's usually a piece of chocolate. So the goal is to find a number closest to two-thirds of the average. So each student writes his name and the number on a piece of paper and I am reading them out loud and find the average and multiply the average by two over three. So what would you choose? So I urge you to stop here at this part of the video and think about it in a minute. What would your answer be? And don't forget that you are rational, trying to be rational. And what information do you have about your fellow students? Are they rational as well? That should dictate your choice. Okay, let's, I mean, the winning number varies in different classrooms, different years. So in my case, the winning number is usually something between 22 and 33. And as the classroom becomes more sophisticated, okay, remember the concept of sophisticated equilibrium, the two-thirds of the average will be closer to 22 and sometimes it is even less than 20 in some of the class classrooms that we played the game so what number would emerge well the word average it's something close to 22 but it depends on the classrooms it depends on how much the students think about the number so, but let's find the textbook answer. Let's find the answer according to the equilibrium concept. First of all, there is no dominant strategy equilibrium because there is no dominant strategy for any player. So regardless of what other players do, there is no single number that's going to be always better for you. So as I cannot find any solution according to the first solution concept, I would like to move to the second solution concept which is based on the idea of whether there is a strategy which is dominated. And if this is the case, I will eliminate those strategies and move forward to see whether I have dominated strategies in the reduced game and so on. And the first step would be we have to eliminate strategies greater than 66. Why is that? What's the maximum average that can arise in this game? If everybody says 100, the average would be 100, then the third of the average would be 66.66. .66. So by saying a number above 66, there is no way that you can win the game. If you are rational, you should pick a number smaller than 66. So anything above 66. 67 and above should be eliminated. I am rational, so everybody else is rational. So nobody plays a number higher than 66. Okay, so iterated elimination. So let's see if I can go further. What's the maximum average that can arise if nobody says anything above 66? Then everybody says 66. That's the highest that you can get. Average is 66 and two-thirds will be 44. 
So nobody would say any number greater than 44. If everybody is rational, and if everybody knows that everybody else is rational. Because the first step, I already drive the fact that rational players do not say any number greater than 66. So the second iteration will take me all the way to 44, and a number above 44 is weakly dominated. It is weakly because, you know, uh, not necessarily you are always better off, but you are never worse off. So this second step is based on the premise that my rationality, everyone else's rationality, plus the knowledge that everyone else is rational. And if I go further, the highest average would be 44, to a third of that, any number greater than 29 is also weakly dominated. And if I do further and further, we will see that any number greater than zero will be dominated, weakly dominated. So what happens is, everybody says zero, the average will be zero, two-thirds of the average will be zero, and according to the rules of the game, maybe I have to buy 20 chocolates for each student. I am glad that such an outcome never <laughs> occurred to me. I had usually one winner, sometimes multiple winners, but never an outcome occurred where all the students said the textbook answer, the correct answer, the sophisticated equilibrium answer, which is zero. I had some students like saying zero, but not everyone. And if I play this game by myself, according to my classmates, probably I would never say zero either. So maybe depending on the class, I might say a number between 10 and 20 or 20 and 30. So you see the rationality and even stronger a version of rationality where we are iterate, iteratively eliminating dominated strategies, that is quite strong assumption. It's very unlikely that everybody will follow this axiom. So I played this game in my classrooms and there is a very famous professor, Richard Thaler, who got the Nobel Prize in Economics in 2017. He won this game in Financial Times. But the participants had more than like one minute. They had to, you know, send the answer after some significant amount of time. And this is the distribution of their answer. As you can see, like there are many people like saying a number like close to zero, so they could get the idea of sophisticated equilibrium, but we see numbers also higher, like a lot of numbers are in between like zero and 30 and 40. But we see some spikes. So that's like something that I want to talk about. So rationality is like very strong. So everybody like saying zero hardly occurs. So let me give the result of Thaler's experiment. The average turned out to be 17 and two thirds of the average, namely the winning number, turns out to be 12. My classroom averages usually are a number between 20 and 30. So behavioral economics is trying to capture what's really happening in the real life. So rationality is not something black and white, zero and one. We have some levels of rationality and behavioral economics is trying to model that. Can we really identify different levels of rationality? And this game provides a very nice framework and the distribution of the answers also give that idea. So there are different cognitive hierarchies. So level zero, I had some students at that level they pick any number between 0 and 100. So it can be their favorite number. They can pick 42, which is, you know, the answer for all the important questions according to Hitchhiker's Guide to the, to the Galaxy. 
So any number. So if I know that all of my fellow students are level zero, what number would I choose? I would know that the average would be some number close to 50. So in order to win this game, I have to choose a number two thirds of the average. So I would say a number like a 33. In behavioral game theory, we call it level one rationality. So you assume that all the others are level zero. That's why you pick a number uh, equal to 33. Usually, in my experiments, the winning number is less than 33. Because in my classrooms, people have higher levels of rationality. The second level would be the following. All of my classmates are level 1. They know that everybody else is going to pick a number randomly between 0 and 100, and the average would be close to 50, so I have to pick 33. If I know that my classmates are thinking this way, in order to beat them, I would say 2 thirds of 33, which would be 22. Okay, so a couple of days ago, I had a, a game theory class, and the winning number was exactly 22. So the second level of rationality was perfect in order to win this game. So what about the standard answer according to uh, iterated elimination of dominated strategies, which we did just a minute ago. So we go further and then we go all the way to zero, which is the same as the sophisticated equilibrium. So this game provides a very nice outline that we can model rationality and irrationality according to different cognitive hierarchies. So, in the next lecture, I will talk about Nash equilibrium. See you all in my next lecture. Goodbye.